that no citizen is granted. You wear a black robe, suddenly you're above the law. Well, that's not how it works anymore, people. So here's what we have to do. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. We're going to have to create a petition. And in that petition, we are going to call for the removal of judicial immunity. And once the removal of judicial immunity occurs, and judges are now held to accountability, like all the rest of us, then we will see all the nonsensical court decisions of the last 50 years slowly be erased, and America put right back on track. It's a Gordian Knot solution. It's the Alexander solution for the corruption, the mire, that is the American judicial system. The law isn't broken. The police departments aren't broken. The courts and their employees are broken. They have forgotten that they are civil servants. Civil servant. Do you remember what servant means, Mr. Judge? Mr. Judge, it means you serve me. It means your power has been derived from what I have granted you. You have no power greater than mine. You have no power greater than the old lady down the hall or the young man down the road. You have no power greater than the American citizenry. You want to make a decision that affects people for the rest of their lives. You want to send people to jail. You want to force people to make payments. You want to do whatever you want to do. You better have the sword of Damocles dangling over your head as to assure me that the jurisprudence that you vomited out of your mouth while you're playing with yourself under your little robe is reasonable and just. Because we know what you're all about. Protection of yourself. Protection for your pathetic decisions. Protection for the ideologically driven court decisions that have plagued America for half a century or more. You want to change in America, people. That's where you change. You change the courts. And once the courts are accountable, then your federal officials are accountable. Then your school officials are accountable. Then everyone is accountable the same way you and I are accountable. And then you won't see a Jim Comey getting up there and lying to America. You won't see a Loretta Lynch getting up there and lying to America. You won't have affirmatively advanced frauds sitting on the bench in the first place because these people would not have been given power because the judicial decisions that violated your civil rights way back in 1964 will be erased and America will become a land of merit and achievement once again. You have to do A, B, C, and D to get to E. You don't do A, sign your name to a paper, and somebody else does all the rest for you, and you're granted E. Not without all the rest of us suing the person who made that decision that deprived us of our civil rights and our equal liberties. A bill crafted soon, properly worded, to remove from the black-robed fools who to sit above us as superiors and judge us and interpret words for us. Let me tell you, people, I don't know where you went to school or what makes you think you can interpret a word for me, because you cannot. You read that Constitution. You find the words immunity for the judiciary. Then we'll have a conversation where you have a basis in authority. Until then... You are a clown, supporting clowns, who have given themselves power over you. Are you a lawyer? Are you a judge? Are you out there? I know a bunch of you are listening. How do you tolerate this, that someone sits above you, haughty with power? That's not what America is about. We threw down our kings 240 years ago. I don't know what made these guys in black decide they were the new kings. America is not run by common law. America is run by the Constitution. If you people don't understand that, you need to go back to school. Well, that's what Bad Machine is here for. It's your 60 minutes of radical re-education. 
The judiciary does not sit above you. They pretend to. Remind them that they are nothing but civil servants. And they will be reminded when we demand that the law is changed and they are held as equals to us. We who have given them our power. That they have corrupted and twisted for their own gain. No more. Bad Machine. After a long investigation, FBI Director James Comey said none of those things that you told the American public were true. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to, uh, in my view, clarify. Director Comey said that my answers were truthful and what I've said is consistent with what I have told the American people. Good morning, Director Comey. Uh, Secretary Clinton said she never sent or received any classified information over her private email. Was that true? Our investigation found that there was classified information sent. So it was not true? Okay, that's what he said. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say. Secretary Clinton said there was nothing marked classified on her emails either sent or received. Was that true? That's not true. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say. Secretary Clinton said I did not email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Was that true? No, there was classified material emailed. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say. Secretary Clinton said she used just one device. Was that true? She used multiple devices during the four years uh, of her term as Secretary of State. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say. Secretary Clinton said all work-related emails were returned to the State Department. Was that true? No, we found work-related emails, thousands, that were not returned. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say. Secretary Clinton said neither she nor anyone else deleted work-related emails from her personal account. Was that true? That's a harder one to answer. Uh, we found traces of work-related emails uh, in on devices or in Slack space, whether they were deleted or whether when a server was changed out, something happened to them. There's no doubt that the work-related emails that were removed electronically from the, the email system. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say. Secretary Clinton said her lawyers read every one of the emails and were overly inclusive. Did her lawyers read the email content individually? No. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say. Well, in the interest of time, and because I have a plane to catch tomorrow afternoon, I'm not going to go through any more of the false statements, but I am going to ask you to put on your old hat. False exculpatory statements, they are used for what? Well, either for the, the substantive prosecution or for evidence of intent in a criminal prosecution. Exactly. Intent and consciousness of guilt, right? Is that right? Right. Con consciousness of guilt and intent. Uh, in your old job, you would prove intent, as you just referenced, um, by showing the jury evidence of a complex scheme that was designed for the very purpose of concealing the public record. And you would be arguing, in addition to concealment, the destruction that you and I just talked about, or certainly the failure to preserve. You would argue all of that under the heading of content, you would also intent. You would also be arguing the pervasiveness of the scheme when it started, when it ended, and the number of emails, whether they were originally classified or up classified. You, you would argue all of that under un, under the heading of intent. You would also probably, under common scheme or plan, argue the burn bags of daily calendar entries or the missing daily calendar entries as a common scheme or plan to conceal. Two days ago, uh, Director, you said a reasonable person in her position should have known a private email was no place to send and receive classified information. And you're right, an average person does know not to do that. Uh, this is no average person. This is a former First Lady, a former United States Senator, a former Secretary of State that the President now contends is the most competent, qualified person to be President since Jefferson. He didn't say that in 08, but he says it now. 
She affirmatively rejected efforts to give her a state.gov account. She kept these private emails for almost two years and only turned them over to Congress because we found out she had a private email account. So you have a rogue email system set up before she took the oath of office. Thousands of what we now know to be classified emails, some of which were classified at the time. One of her more frequent email comrades was, in fact, hacked, and you don't know whether or not she was. And this scheme took place over a long period of time and resulted in the destruction of public records. And yet you say there is insufficient evidence of intent. You say she was extremely careless, but not intentionally so. Uh, you and I both know intent is really difficult to prove. Very rarely do defendants announce, on this day, I intend to break this criminal code section. Just to put everyone on notice, I am going to break the law on this day. It never happens that way. You have to do it with circumstantial evidence. Or if you're Congress and you realize how difficult it is to prove specific intent, you will formulate a statute that allows for gross negligence. Uh, my time is out, but this is really important. You mentioned there's no precedent for criminal prosecution. My fear is there still isn't. There's nothing to keep a future Secretary of State or President from this exact same email scheme or their staff. And my real fear is this. It's what the Chairman touched upon. This double-track justice system that is rightly or wrongly perceived in this country. That if you are a private in the Army and you email yourself classified information, you will be kicked out. But if you are Hillary Clinton and you seek a promotion to Commander-in-Chief, you will not be. So what I hope you can do today is help the average person, the reasonable person you made reference to, the reasonable person understand why she appears to be treated differently than the rest of us would be. With that, I would yield back. How can anyone with a high school education, not even a college education, not even an advanced degree in some science, how can anyone with a high school education that remembers what happened at Watergate take Hillary Clinton's candidacy for president seriously at this point? How? How do you sit there and ignore the fact that this woman has violated national security blatantly, daringly, without concern for anything and expect to be taken seriously. It's not a matter of whether we think Hillary Clinton is credible or not. It is whether you, from here on out, are credible or not. Let's jump back a few decades, all of us, to when we first begin to learn about what happened in Europe in the 1930s. In 1940s, and how a segment of the population were suddenly turned upon by their friends and neighbors and customers and government for no apparent reason. And these people were persecuted and harassed and driven from their homes and driven from their businesses and culled in train cars and sent to work camps. Remember being a child and asking yourself, how does this happen? What type of hatred must have been festering in the minds of the people who allowed this to happen? The reality is, there was no hatred festering in anybody's minds. What there was instead was a zealotry for those who were in power. A zealotry to be on the side of what was right instead of being on the side of what was wrong. And back then, what was wrong was standing against the government's nonsense. Standing against government propaganda that separated the people, that divided the people, that gave the people a target to hate. And then, once we all had a target to hate, they went out and they attacked that target. Well, this is exactly what's going on right now in your country, people. Exactly what's going on right now. 
And it's not just a single people anymore. It is an entire...